Jarvan banned out by Yoey Wolves. Irelia Rek'Sai so far on the other side for Bangkok Titans. Well, correct. What, what, what you don't want normally is to leave open the crazy combo, which is Lissandra mid, Jarvan Yangle, and Nartop. That's like... That's, that would be destroying, you know? And uh, it's really good that you can see Lissandra and Jarvan taken out, uh, because that means that um, uh, Yo uh, knows what Bank on Titans uh, play, Ooh, especially wow. with that combo. Okay, so now it was available, but they first picked Zed, so going straight in there, that's... Yeah, it's okay, it's a good first pick, mm. actually. You think? Yeah, I think it's a good first pick. I mean, I, I always think I always think a blind pick Z is a tricky one uh, in the mid lane. But I mean, as you mentioned, now it's available. Siva also oh, it was it was available already. Big jump now it's available. Yeah, okay. so they've left it possibly a now Siva for. I mean, are we still going to favor Janna in there? Do you think? I mean, are they going to go with that one? Uh, may, may, maybe not yet. Maybe not yet. What I see is that actually Siva is a really good pick against Z. Said is, uh, is is actually not able if Sivir plays well to to one shot Sivir in team fights. So that's a really safe pick. And at the same time, you know nowadays um, that Graves is getting really really used. Uh, Sivir is a really corner pick to to Graves. I think Sivir is a great pick for now. I gotta be honest, Joe. I feel like we've slimmed down a little bit on the uh, camera there. I know. I mean, it, I know it, it, they often say it adds like, twenty pounds, but I feel like I've lost about three stone, which nobody in the Western world knows what the hell stone is apart from your English. But. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at this. <laughs> and, we, and we slim young chaps with ties on and everything. Yeah, yeah they definitely went for the Yana, actually. They went for the Yana. Yep. It, it's a really good combo against Zed. Like said, honestly, against uh, Yana and Sivir, is going to have a really hard time. So, other side then here. Nah coming through into the second round of picks. And you'd expect that that is going to be picked up here for uh, the Yoey Flash Wolves. Actually, Stake has played that a couple of times already over uh, in their domestic tournament. So, expecting that to go through. Uh, if we actually look, um, Casa, who's... I'm not sure if that's just a name change there. I didn't find any information about that. And as far as I knew, it was going to be Refrain that would be uh, was actually starting for Yoey Flash Wolves. But that seems to have not been the case. And he's actually going to be locking in Rengar for himself. Yeah, Rengar being picked up. We saw it a couple of times through uh, LCS. I know Impaler played it and gained in North America despite <laughs> not being that successful in Europe. Yeah, I don't know what happens with, the, with the Rengar in America because <laughs> Rengar is normally actually a really good pick. Hmm. In Europe, I can see it very often and it's normally very effective. So I'm not entirely sure why it doesn't work there. But right now, I think uh, a, a good pick to think about could be Javan. But the thing is that Javan against these three champions, I mean, against uh, Zed especially, is really not that great. But it could be an okay pick, actually. Oh, it's, it's banned, actually. It was Never banned. Mind. It was banned, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's correct. It was banned out there. And it's something we've seen then a Pantheon lot of um, with Pantheon the jungle bands. Yeah, Pantheon obviously out there. That's good. I'm seeing Talon hovered over. I don't think he's going to get picked. Nah, so we haven't seen so. a Talon for a long so. time. I think it's only Nuke Nuke that really ever used to play it. You know, Talon is actually okay against, for example, Ari, mm. but it's not a, like a really safe pick, so it's, it's really a double-edged sword. Maybe a team that is supposed to lose, maybe as a you know double-edged sword, as a tricky pick, can use it, but it's not very reliable. And we see Corky and Morgana, which, uh, in all fairness, is not a great lane against uh, Janna Sivir, so I'm not entirely sure how they're going to play out. And uh, well, they are hoping over Yorick. I don't think no. that's going to be the pick. <laughs> no. But, but actually, the, this guy Warlock actually plays some some weird stuff. So maybe he comes in with something out of the box. Well, Yorick. I don't know. I think Demon in particular is a uh, he doesn't a like hater Yorick. of Yorick. So, no, it doesn't really. No, actually, like Yorick. I, I've seen really good Yorick players, and actually, if, if it's played properly, it can actually sort of work out in a in a good comp. You know. Mm. Maybe protect the AD carry comp. Well, I mean, you used to run it with the old Caitlyn. That was that was the Yorick run. Oh well, uh, not Caitlyn. Uh, no, 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 Cassiopeia. No, no. Cassiopeia. Oh yeah, oh, I remember that. Oh, oh yeah, that was crazy. Man. Yeah, that the, was crazy. Back you can in just go melee range and EE everyone. It was really really good. Back really in, fun. Back in the day when Cassiopeia was actually viable. As, oh, yeah. uh, although it was played it, um, okay, a few right? times yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Right now it's okay yeah. because you you can pressure a lot the lane, and mm -hmm. then the late game is crazy, you know. So we have Malphite. I gotta say it's. It's an okay combo, but if you look at the combo of Yo, um, I think it's superior. Maybe not, maybe not a really good late game because they lack on AP damage, but they have Corky for that, which is really good poke for late game. Actually, people uh, miss, uh, maybe underestimate the, the Corky AP damage late mm. game, which is honestly crazy. It's a lot of poke, and if the opponents are going for full, ar full armor for Nara and, and Zer, it's going to be really, really painful. And what do you make of the double assassin lane in the mid lane? I mean, how do you always... Oh, well, normally, nowadays everybody knows uh, whether or not they're going to die 1v1, so it's hard to get a 1v1 kill. But you can say that Zed should beat Fizz quite easily 1v1, because he pushes him out and you, uh, you can poke Fizz quite a lot. But when Fizz gets the the Zonias and the uh, Lich Bane, I think uh, Zed is going to have a hard time, if they have even fun, which is hard for Fizz. 
Well, there you see, you know, we gained weight once again and now we're kind of just settling in between our producers, not sure whether you know, they're better looking or yeah, we're actually the better looking like, guys. Who should they show? I mean, th obviously these are the guys that are in Taipei. They're in the, obviously, uh, local language in Taipei, which is obviously called Taiwanese. Uh, actually, Mandarin. They'd be Chinese Taiwanese, Mandarin. I think. I think it's Taiwanese. a local version of Mandarin. I, I'm, I'm probably I just thinking myself I mean, a horribly there's probably like a, what, What's your question? There's probably a million and one dialects in Mandarin, uh, no doubt. I oh, don't, yeah. yeah. I don't know uh, the exact dialect they use. But anyway, uh, game about to get underway. It is going to be the first match of the Intel Extreme Masters in Taipei. Of course, this is all building up to the qualifiers for the International World Championships, which, of course, will take part in Katowice in Poland in March, and it's going to be an absolute fantastic event. Oh, of yes. course, I'm we've already had San Jose, that. we've already had Cologne, we've had Gambit, winning out in Cologne. Surprised everyone, Crazy, really. Actually. Cloud9, of course, big champions over in San Jose. So we had some fantastic games. Let's hope we have just as good tournaments here. It is the quarterfinals. It is a best of three. And we're going to be starting out for Yoey Flash Wolves up against the Bangkok Titans. And uh, we can see it on your screens. We're going to get in there in a moment. But they haven't, we haven't missed anything, that's for sure. They're just there. There we go. So... Quick roster rundown for you guys at home. Starting out for the Yoey Flash Wolves over on the blue side. It is Stake, the big afro head top laner. He's playing Nara as well, so it kind of suits. Casa in the jungle. It's a new guy, not uh, the name we were expecting. Uh, Maple in the mid lane, NL and Sword Art, both the duo lane. And these guys, if you may recognize them, were at the Season 3 World Championships in Los Angeles. Yeah, and obviously over on the other side for the Bangkok Titans, Warlock in the top lane, 007X in the jungle, G4 in the mid lane, Lloyd, which is close to Allen in terms of amazingness of a Lloyd. name, Lloyd, uh, and Valen there on support. Interested again, like I said before, to see exactly how strong the Bangkok Titans are at this point. As I mentioned, they are currently pretty much destroying everyone in their group over in GPL. Their, their system's a little bit different where they have four four groups of four, I think it is, um, overall. So slightly different to uh, what a lot of the leagues are looking like at this point. We can see the jungle starts here looking pretty standard, to be honest, across the board, except the fact that we are going to be seeing a lane swap coming in early on. Yeah, we'll see how it works out. Kind of surprised by Lloyd, actually, the fact that he did go for Sivir. He played Lucian uh, four times, I think it was, um, throughout the league system. So... Obviously, whether it's been banned away from, whether he's just thought, right, it's available, let's go for it straight away. Maple O in the mid lane, looking like he's starting well, as you predicted, of course, going up against this Fizz. Fizz is going to be probably fairly passive until at least level six, and expect to see Maple doing a good job against the Maple, uh, very strong mid laner, actually, last time I watched him against AHQ, so... We'll see whether he manages to bully him out. But I'm also expecting some pretty wild matches. Think of the Chinese scene and the Korean scene. It's kind of like a mix of the two. So you, you see a lot of fights going on. So I'm expecting to see a lot of early aggression from these teams. Yeah, and actually that the one of the games you were talking about, that AHQ Westor for AHQ actually played Mordekaiser uh, in that <laughs> game. So we might see a couple of interesting picks coming out of these teams for now. Oh. We are seeing... Hello. I uh, just refresh it. If I'm just gonna like give some background on this. Technically, we are receiving a clean feed from Taipei, which is why we uh, you just saw that actually not so up clean. There. Oh, <laughs> not so clean. Yeah, oh. we are actually gonna see a kill here. Possibly no. 007 actually flashing over the wall. True James Bond style. I'm sure there's gonna be plenty more of those terrible jokes where that one came from. But very very close there to picking up the first blood. Yeah, it did mean of course that blue buff did get interrupted. I didn't see where they managed to steal it away. I'm going to have a quick glimpse myself because I do have a uh, spec client myself. I'm going to a quick spin around. I think Carcer actually stole it away from him. Yes, he did. I think Carcer got in and stole that blue buff. So that puts going to put Pantheon behind already. That is 007 for Bangkok Titans. So it's going to be a little bit of a problem for them already. Let's have a quick peek towards top lane. Pretty even between the two. Malphite versus Nar. I mean, you're not going to get a great deal of excitement from that lane at the top. It's often been the case uh, for the top laners, but as you can see, a lane swap did happen. It did mean, of course, that Nar will be up against that 2v1. But the thing is, a Nar, he's okay with that. He's got his boomerang going to be tossing it out, whereas Malphite probably would be a little bit more pressured if they wanted to go for it. But of course, when they did that three-man dive on blue, it's left them a bit of time. He's getting some farm on. Yeah, Doran Shield stuff in there just to make that lane a bit more manageable for him. Uh, guys, we're aware that we've got no, no sound right now, but that, as I said, since we're receiving the game feed over the seas or 
a lot of land maybe i'm not sure which route it takes um uh, we will try and get our fix as soon as possible so that we can actually hear what's going on in game for now though not too much to speak about we can see that that uh kaza the jungler for the Yoey Flash Wolves just on the bottom side of the map and Morgana actually going to come down onto that bottom lane which should make things a little bit trickier for Warlock to actually uh, you know keep getting the farm in there and should start to fall a little further behind that of what Stake is doing on now. Yeah and just watching uh, G4 was actually backed early I think that was earlier than he planned I think to there. doing great actually. Yeah well I mean he's keeping up with farm on Z yeah, exactly. so he's, he's doing I mean pressure. He's doing well in that part but he's Eh, he didn't, he didn't, he's before level six. We'll see whether it worked out for him. We do have the supports coming down the bottom lane. So Valen has joined Warlock, the top laner, of course, to help that lane be pushed up. Well, no surprises, Stake doing a good wallop in the top lane. He's got a good farm going on already compared to uh, his counterpart, Warlock, on this Malphite. Both going to be doing similar roles as well when it comes to the team fights. It's going to be a case of who can slam each other first, I think. NL, though, very experienced AD carry on this Corky. It was the second choice, which did surprise me. Corkies have been uh, popular. Uh, also, let's get your take on this one with the, with the bottom lane pairings. Mm -hmm. We were talking about it roughly at the start. Obviously, the Siva versus Corky. All these all these champions basically rising to occasion again. Lucian fading away a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. what, what, what is your team's favorite down there? What's, what's going on with this? Yeah, right now, um, as I said already, uh, Graves is taking more, more and more importance. Uh, which is probably one of the reasons Sivir uh, is starting to be played. And of course, Corky. Uh, Corky basically works with everything nowadays. It's very good poke, especially with teams that you have uh, double AD in mid and top. Corky works extremely well. And um, yeah, that, that's the point. I think Corky right now is, uh, is, is probably the best pick for Eddie Carey, one of the best picks for Eddie Carey. And in the mid lane, actually, I'm, I'm noticing, I'm just focusing a lot in the mid lane. That's why I'm, I'm not speaking that much about the mid lane. It's all right. Froggen did the but exact it, same thing last time he was here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's the, it's the mid lane thing, you know, the mid lane thing. You just tend to look your lane. So um, in mid lane, I'm, I'm just checking out um, what set is, is leveling up. You know, I actually, against Fist, uh, I tested many times to, to max E, which is actually really good for 1v1 in etc. Maybe even uh, push power as well. And I see he's leveling up Q, which is okay, good, uh, as well good. So this means that he's going to um, probably go very, very soon for an all-in. And his item build uh, is telling you that, actually. Instead of going for a magic resist, with the Hex Drinker, he went for the Cutlass. That means that he really wants to confront this Fizz. There we go, the 2v2 mid. Well, we might see this one happening here as we are going to see Carson coming around. It's surely going to be Pantheon. They jump towards, there's a death mark going down, but the first blood switched around instantly. They do manage to get a kill back. Not got enough damage there to finish off Fizz, and that will be the junglers both coming to help the mid laners, ending up both dying. Yeah, it wasn't exactly the ideal situation, of course. 1-1, one, one, all square. And considering, I guess really you could say, piece. considering Casa had the advantage early on against 007 in, in that jungle when they pushed them on the blue buff, it's probably perfect for Bangkok Titans, honestly. Mm -hmm. But this may well be some pressure on the bottom lane. Looks like they're all going to back away, actually. And still Corky ahead in CS, doing well in farm as we get a freeze on that screen. Luckily, we can still see what's going on, on our screen. Uh, but uh, nobody going for any early dragons this time around. What do you take of the whole new Dragon system? Obviously, uh, we haven't seen you guys playing on it yet. I think the Challenger scene is going to be starting mm -hmm. uh, this week, I believe it is, actually, mm -hmm. this week. Yeah. Um, what, what's, your been, what's been your take on all of the changes coming into, obviously, 5.1? Oh, well, I just, uh, I believe Dragon is actually still really, really important, you know? The point of Dragon is that, as you know already, the its second buff is actually not that important, mm -hmm. so you can play around that. Yeah. So uh, after the first buff, maybe you don't need, don't need to commit that much for that Dragon, and maybe you can make a top play which is what many teams are doing lately, which are going for the tier two tower. Well, we see Stake here moving through the jungle. Actually going to slam 007 against the wall. We will see G4 moving around, but Zed will join the fight as well. 007 surely going to go down. He flashes, but <laughs> a nice little boomerang coming out from Stake. But Whoa. now the rest of the team come down as well. Unstoppable force was used. And, well, Stake is still hammering away, but they've lost the jungler. And that will be a two for one in favor of the Bangkok Titans. This is godlike for Fizz. Look, look, the, the, the team Fizz is playing against. This is just a perfect pick, and he's actually fed right now he's gonna be able to keep up with Zed. He's just perfect for Fizz right now. Perfect position for him. And then teleport obviously use their good work from Warlock on to teleport and get that unstoppable force off and start things rolling for the Bangkok Titans who were actually starting to edge behind in the lane phase but UE Flash Wolves caught out caught a little off guard I think in that fight. Didn't expect quite so much stake of course 
was involved, but didn't teleport in there, didn't get too much. Managed to get it, get in and get out with his boomerang blades, but... They, they are picking the fights very well, Banco Titans, actually. Because, uh, they, you know, the rough start, uh, you could you could very well say that they started really, really bad. That could have snowballed in a really bad way. But they are picking the right fights, and they know when to pick them. So it's going really good, actually. When they fought in, in their own jungle, they knew that Malphite was coming already, so they could afford that fight. It was really, really good. Just a little bit of gold overall. They, they are currently down about 700 at this point. We'll see how that one actually changes. If we look down some of the early items coming out, no surprise really in that bottom lane. Corky headed up towards his Trinity Force. BF Sword was picked up for uh, Lloyd there on Siva as his first item has also fallen a little bit behind in CS. Po both top laners going the tanky route once again and really not too much of a surprise on that front either. It looks like we actually might see a little bit of action here in the mid lane. Yeah, they're going to be diving in. G4's in all sorts of trouble, though. He will Ooh. manage to pop off. I thought the blue 7 might follow through on that one, but instead, Karsa will get away. So quick and easy gank, two-man gank on that mid lane. I, I think... Uh on the other hand side, I think uh, Feast could have uh, started uh, with Hourglass instead of rushing the Lich Bane, just because of the fact that they have Nara and Zer, which have a lot of uh, huge um, basic base damage, base 80 damage. And just the Seeker's Anger would have probably given them the edge in the first team fight. So I would have probably won for Hourglass. It was a, it's a little bit weird knowing that they have Rengar set as well as a, as a ganker mid lane, um, not to go for armor. It's really, really ballsy. Maybe just overconfidence here from G4. Either way, we are seeing a pink ward put down by a dragon. It looks like the Bangkok Titans are going to want to take this one away. Corky, the only one anywhere near that could do something. But well, there is a TP coming down now as we see the Bangkok Titans just backing straight away from that one. Didn't want to get involved. The question now is whether the Flash Wolves will actually stick around and try oh. and do the dragon themselves. Nari is really far away, if I can see, right, in the map. Yeah, Nari is really... I mean, uh, Rengar is really far away. Yeah, Warlock doesn't oh, yeah, have his might. TP, though. He can't... They Teleporting to join it, so they should get taken away. They've just zoned them out, basically. Oh, they, they, they should have done more there. They had Smite and, and Rengar wasn't there. I think they could have went a little bit more aggressive right there. Imagine they got the, the Dragon and Malphite is pushing top. I think it's worth a try, right? Maybe you die for it, but if you get the Dragon, you probably win the game because you're getting a lot of top pressure right, right there. Yeah, I mean, that's just uh, obviously lack of vision. They didn't know correct. that, that correct. Kasi wasn't there, so they had no idea that Rengar wasn't close by, but... They had got the ping ward down, it got cleared out, but they had an idea that he wasn't in and around the dragon, but I guess oh, 007 didn't fancy it. He's a got zero tank play, and we'll see whether they're going to try and make anything work out here, of course. It's there's going to be, gonna be the man drop. There we go. Your man drop is going to come down, but Ooh, that, that was, was nice from Maple getting away. The ultimate did come out of Fizz. Janner had come around as well, but Maple, I think, getting away with that one lightly. Yeah, that's the that's the CC chaining that uh, will be removed shortly. <laughs> Hasn't quite been enabled yet, I feel, in this one. But uh, I know for a fact, as pro players, the chain CC thing has been a big deal for oh, you yeah. guys. I know Eddie definitely. was definitely, he's been very vocal about it. Obviously, the crescendos used to get of the course. chains and then suddenly someone flashes away. It's, it's so annoying. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. It is uh, sort of buggy, actually. When you see it as a spectator, uh, you can feel it. But when you're as a player, it's even more painful, you know? I think there's a play in the middle soon. Yeah, we see Zed I can see in the map something. straight back into his lane there. And actually, Rengar is going to be going oh, through there, there as well. And G4 it. it's okay. It's went okay. low <laughs> HP, yeah. We, we saw, saw it. it. We, we saw, saw it. it earlier. So we were like, you know, they're going to go mid lane. But actually, no, we didn't really catch it. G4 went low, actually used Ooh. Flash and Ignite. So those two summoner spells going to be down for him. Meanwhile, this bottom lane taking a lot of damage. Uh, the uh, the turret itself brutal, and man. NL as well. That's a lot of damage coming out from Lloyd. Yeah, that was good work. Good counterplay. NL very low. It was 1v2. With the man drop, obviously, it's going to be on cooldown at the moment. With There is a Rengar in the jungle close by, and that tower is very low, but that's a bold move sticking around like this. Lloyd, while his name doesn't exactly instill fear, he is doing a fantastic job in that bot lane, but you can see 30 CS behind. NL's doing a good work as well. You know, it's a little bit surprising that uh, this Morgana didn't uh, roam that much because if you think about it, uh, opponents, I mean, uh, Bango Titans have Fizz in the mid lane, which is not that great to deep push. So as soon as, um, as uh, how is the team called? Uh, Yo, okay. <laughs> um, group up. It's, it's going to be really easy for them, at least for this moment, um, to get the mid tower. So I think they should actually put more pressure into mid. And at the same time, you don't let Fizz farm when you group up. So maybe they should have done it earlier because right now Fizz has a lot of damage with his E. But they have, they have still time to do it.
They yeah. should put more pressure like that. Yeah, I mean, the flash wolves here, if you look just across the board at CS numbers, actually have a lead in every single respect here. Top lane, good chunk of CS ahead. Jungle even ahead. Uh, there's about 10, 15 CS in the mid lane. There's 30 CS coming out between the AD carries as well. So really done a superior job of the farming stages in this one. That obviously leaves them 1,500 pretty much gold ahead at this point. And obviously they took that first dragon as well without too much of a problem. Bangkok Titans not really pushed in. We are seeing Morgana quite deep in the jungle. And if we look there on the uh, on the right oh, hand side, we can see the TP is going to come down from Malphite as well, oh, right down flush. the back of him. And he should be dead here. It will be Valen that picks that one up. And well, just an easy TP. They were pushed too far up the lane. In in those kind of situations, uh, I know it's actually really easy to say when you're watching from home and and not that easy to do when you're a player. But uh, Corky is, is supposed to, to either flash the Malphite ulti or not flash at all. Because he, he saw the TP coming. He saw it. And he didn't get out of the way of it. <laughs> the stake, though, will take the second tower of the game. They did get the bottom tower before that play happened. Lloyd will be doing the same as well for the Bangkok Gold Titans. Now. So eh, it's not, not a bad for Gold Exchange, but that top lane's not really been affected at all. Warlock's not got too close to that one. Hmm. Maple playing around on G4, seeing if he can draw anything out with that Living Shadow. He's not going to fall for it, though. But Bangkok Titans are starting to group here. I think we're going to have a bit of a middle grouping for both teams. Yeah, I think this should have uh, been done a little bit earlier because uh, Fizz has farmed a lot. You can see the, the farm. He's behind Zed, but he has farmed a, uh, a little bit. Um, you can say that right now with the bot lanes, uh, in bot lane, there's no tier 1 tower right now. So Fizz can go to that lane and start speed pushing. So uh, right now, um, Yo has to um, group up ASAP and start getting gold around the map. Because otherwise, Fizz is going to get too strong. When Fizz gets the Sonias, which is giving him enough armor to survive, I think they're going to have a hard time in teamfights. You know, Fizz for me right now is like Vayne in the, you know, in the old times, where Vayne will just lose every lane, but then in late game, she will just destroy everyone. Mm. You can say Fizz is sort of like that. Well, top lane's about to go down. Stakes have to back away from that. That will be the second tower of the game for the Bangkok Titans. And now we'll see where they move from there. Dragon just a minute away. That's going to be the next play, I feel. You can see... Already starting to group out, already starting to get those wards down. Yo, Flash Wolves did pick up the first dragon of the game. We'll see where the Bangkok Titans decide to contest this time. Yeah, left that one pretty much for free. Half a minute until that's up. So we'll see about that one, see how that one goes down. Biggest problem last time was obviously they had a pink ward on it, but that was all they had there. There was nothing else to grant them any kind of vision. We can already see that they've started to push up here and get themselves in position for that second dragon. As you mentioned, the, the, the dragon buff switches that happen there means that the second dragon less impactful in the grand scheme of things, but, you know, it's still the stepping stone to of course, the, to of the course. more powerful buffs. Of course, the, the first the first buff is still really, really powerful. What I, what I can see, man, is this is actually really interesting. Um, Bangkok Titans uh, setup is really, really good uh, mid to late game against against the Wolves setup. So if this keeps going this way uh, for much longer and they get the farm they need, this is honestly going to be really painful for uh, for Wolves. Well, we can see with Nar in that top lane continuing to split push. They oh. need to deal with this. They need to start putting pressure. The dragon has spawned. They either need to go and go for that objective, or they're going to have to cover off because that top turret will fall eventually. We have a pause, though. Of course, they are live in Taipei. You can see them on your screens there in the bottom corners. They look like... It looks like it's uh, Yui Flashwolves, actually, that's paused it because I can see the guy, the second guy in, hasn't got his hands on the keyboard. Everybody else is... Uh, Ready and waiting to go. How do you handle these situations when you have these pauses, when you're alive? Obviously, you couldn't talk to each other in the mm -hmm. LCS. You can at the Intel Extreme Masters. Um, what are the situations? Just literally quickly recap the situation of where you are. Obviously, at this point in time, they're literally about to have a dragon fight and they've got the put now pushing the top lane. Well, you really want to speak with everyone in your team to tell them what's going on, but you can't. You're not allowed. So everything you can do is just think yourself what you can do yourself to, to prevent anything wrong to, to happen. But in that situation, when the pause happens, you know everything is going to happen because you actually look at the mini button and you look at what's going on and you you know what's going to happen it, it, but you can't communicate if you can't talk so, you like giving the eyes to each other you're right, like <laughs> right after the, right after the post right after the post everyone is like just talking so much they're going to do this they're going to do that they're going to you know like crazy so uh we are about to get back in game looks like the dragon is about to be started off and 
we have sounds. Actually, I think it's just oh, well. arena sounds. I don't think it's the actual game sound. Well, dragon was picked up, though, by Yoi Flash Walls. That's the second dragon of the game taken by them. Really wasn't even contested either because the Fizz got taken down. We didn't get to see that one. So Fizz killed off. Bangkok Titans obviously had to step away. Yeah, right now they are too powerful. Um, as I said already, the base damages, the base physical damages are right now too strong. Um, uh, Bangkok Titans will need more time to farm to be powerful enough. But it can happen, honestly. Like right now, the game is in a is in a in a status where where everything can happen. Actually, teams can come back. Actually, it's not that hard to come back. That's the point. And uh, I can see them. I can see them coming back. Actually, they have a really good setup for that. Also, Sever uh, provides a really good engage. So when Fizz and Malfoy are strong enough. Uh, with the follow-up of Pantheon, they're really, really strong in future team fights. But right now they're not. They really need to play this very, very carefully and farm as much as possible. I think Fizz right now should go to to a side lane and try to be as annoying as he can be. When you're behind, all you want to do is to make the opponent team spend time cleaning waves. That's the best yeah. thing you can do because then if they're cleaning waves, they're not attacking you and they're stronger. So if you clean a, a wave and they clean a wave, you you actually win in that trade because you're behind problem that they have is that Maple seemed to be wanting to get involved and do exactly that and he's now added on top of his Blade of the Ring King that Hex Drinker in there got a Brutalizer as well so that Z is going to be a, a bit of a pain for whoever ends up going up against him. You can see that Siva was down in that bottom lane and uh, actually decided to recall out to get Infinity Edge done plus Brutalizer there as well. Yeah this is a good moment to have uh, somebody like Soas in your team because Soas is a, is a player that likes to do a lot of oh actually there's there's some action. Oh, we'll see whether there is. You can see the man drop is going to come in for Sword Art. We'll see whether it lands on it. Ooh, Dark really Binding, good, good on G G4 there. Actually, may we'll catch him out. Is he going to wow, get taken down? Yes, really he is. Karma comes leaping out of the bushes there with our ultimate. 007 just gets melted. Doesn't have a chance there. Valen's going to try and run away from this one. It's a three on three. They may as well still come out on top here. Valen should be able to catch him out. No, the Howling Gale yeah, wasn't rock, enough. Man. He's just knocking him down. Malfoy, well, he's a rock, but he's got zero damage. He's got that Sunfire Cape burning away. He will eventually get one kill but I don't think that's going to be all they're going to get Valen should get chased down here Ooh. and I was going to get one can he get the second I think the Howling Gale is enough to keep him away oh the shuriken's going through it was a four for one though in favor of the flash walls and while it was all happening Stake wasn't even there he's going to take the top tower yeah, that was a 5v4, actually, yeah. uh, which obviously didn't really go well for the Bangkok Titans. They lose out well, on kills. They so much from this. They lose out their turret as well, that second tier. They might even end up losing that second tier turret here in the bottom lane. There's another wave coming in now, and they're even pressuring the mid lane as well. G4 is back there now, so he should be able to actually hold on to that one. We can see that NL has also started to push away from that bottom side. So just like that, a lot of kills coming down, plus the towers as well for the Yoi Flash Wolves. You know, right now, uh, Tier 2 Towers are extremely important in this season. Since the changes, uh, that uh, the second the Tier 2 Towers have uh, the shield, mm -hmm. every bit of damage you can do to that tower is going to be really, really helpful. Oh, that, that Orca oh. was a bit derp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's okay. That's one way it's Happens to all it. of us. <laughs> it's not really working out for him. And, you know, when you're going up against just the support player and you're not managing to land your skill shots, you're kind of in a bad way, especially when your opponent mid laner is 4 1 4 now. He's going to dive in once again. Now I just bounce away from that one. Bangkok Titans, they're hanging on to this mid tower, but that's all they've got. The top inner turret is down. The bottom inner turret was low. And look at that. You can see Morgana once again. They're just picking on Fizz right now. I do have the little feeling that when Fizz was uh, 2 0 1 and the same farm as Zed. I think, oh my ooh, god. Yeah, that's a I, lot I, I of damage you, coming that's, that's in. Crazy. Actually, Stake getting a little bit caught oh. out from this one, though, and they managed to lock him up. It was but they Warlock. will lose mid tower yeah, probably for this. I think so as well. They're going to try and back away, but what are the Flash Wolves going to do? They've actually got no wave on the bottom side. Their vision's actually been pushed away there as well. So it looks like they're actually going to start to move away from that one, deciding not to go any further 5v4. I yeah. think right after the blue buff, they could have very well pushed mid lane. Um, uh, a, a little bit, or put maybe words in the top side uh, of the map. You know, when when there is not not uh, no objective you can get, the best objective you can do is to get vision in their jungle. This is something really important that uh, the teams that are not top don't acknowledge. Uh, getting words in their jungle counts as an objective. 
Yeah, it's not. You, While well, you haven't got a tower, you you know exactly what's coming. Especially when there's a minute for dragon, they had that exactly. whole lower half of the jungle covered out. They could have got some wards down there. You, you can even go to the top side and maybe leave this dragon because it may not be as important. Maybe get a tier three tower. You know, everything uh, you you can work around everything once you have the vision. But uh, it's really hard to make calls when you don't see any, anything going on. Right now, maybe they are too far ahead, so they can do whatever they want. But it will be much more effective, maybe to get the top vision. Yeah, I mean, and look at the map. Look at the mini map right now. Talking of vision, there isn't really a great deal actually within Bangkok Titans jungle. Obviously, your flash walls, they just need to get some walls in there, but they haven't got anything in and around the blue buff area. Mm -hmm. So they have no idea. Dragon spawning in 40 seconds time. Like, if you were to say, look at, I don't know, the LCK, the Korean scene, mm -hmm. that would be completely littered yeah, by walls. Correct. Behind. You know, uh, I was looking at the statistics because, you know, um, uh, in Jinji 2, uh, along others, I was making uh, part of the calls, and I, I I wanted to see the reason why Koreans were just better than us, you know, and the main reason is actually vision, and you can see that uh, as an average, I think it was 109 words uh, against the 70 of Europe, so it was actually you can see the the the, the big difference, you know. Yeah, I, I remember uh, logging the stats last year. Actually, it was quite funny. I think it was. Um... I think it was Creaton that we noticed as the AD carry that didn't place a single war <laughs> in the like the, the entire yeah. season. Fair, and then it, we told Kevin, no and Kevin's just like, what? <laughs> it's you, you know, it's like, yeah, you might want to check your teammates, mate. They're not placing wards. <laughs> when we had Broken Shard in, uh, in, uh, in our team as a coach, he was always telling me, man, you should get more wards. And I was like, okay, why would I get a ward if I can get a large ward? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe an amplifying tone, like more AP, you know, more AP damage. Well, look at this. A dragon going to be started off. Could this be the first one of the game for the Bangkok Titans? Oh, here comes Ringo, and he smites it away. Oh. And it looks like they're going to fight here as well. That was far too easy. Zed going to be jumping in there. Nars right in the middle. He actually gets monsooned into the rest of the team, but he'll transform. Slams Janna against the wall as well. I think Fizz might get away, or will he? We saw Maple flash there, and the rockets from NL should be enough here. Well, oh, Deathmark oh. or certainly be enough. It's actually Corky that gets it and that's a triple kill for NL. They steal the dragon and they get four kills. Uh, sorry, three kills if I can actually count. That just, again, second time in a row really going horribly wrong for the Bangkok Titans. And, and there goes probably the last chance of Bangkok Titans of coming back in this game. Yeah, I mean, it, it, literally every fight has snowballed in towards Yo Flash Walls. That's going to be the second tier tour, tier two turret of the game. E easy for me to say. The mid turret goes down as well. 11-7. Massive amounts of gold. Three dragon stacks already. The Yo Flash Walls very much in control. You know, we were talking about how obviously the Fizz just needs to farm, needs to get stacked. He has now got that on his hourglass. A little bit but I think later. it's too late. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as I was saying before, that uh, a team fight stopped me. Uh, I think if Fizz, when he was 2-0-1, um, would have built maybe, maybe, you never know it, right? Uh, the Seeker's Hangar before, maybe he wouldn't have got as pressure, maybe he wouldn't have that in the 2v2, you never know, right? Uh, but those little things actually do make the difference. And I'm talking about, obviously, the vision wars that we do have. Oh, hello, G4's well, in trouble. He He's, yeah, it. well, the Zonius is not going to help you too much there. He's going to get taken down. Whoa, oh, uh, cheeky little yeah. juke and flash. He gets away. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, going oh. back to... <laughs> <laughs> just gets pounced on by Casa. Going back to the vision, just looking at the OE flash wars. They all went back. Everybody came back. Pink wards all down the oh, side. Great. They have learned. You know, they are starting to get there. This is starting to become... Uh, Pretty much just a, a matter of fact, I think, for Yo-Yo Flash Wars is they're picking Ringer, up man. kills now. <laughs> I, I just hate Ringer, man. Especially when God just stuff like that, you're like, I'm totally safe here. Nope, Flash yep. pounds straight on top of your face. Not exactly ideal. Uh, we can see that Stake still continues to push this top wave. Actually, Spirit Visage, uh, Phage, and that Sunfire Cape now for him means that he's pretty much... I mean, they just sent Janna up to deal with him. That's not exactly a fair fight, really, uh, sending your support to deal with that now. Everyone is getting actually outfarmed, but the, I think there is a, a little problem that I didn't notice before, and it's a mistake by me, which is um, that they have, you know, Malphite and Fizz uh, are actually, I mean, Fizz is not supposed to beat Zed 1v1, you know, and Malphite is not supposed to beat pretty much any lane. So we have right here two sort of lanes that are supposed not to win at least, and you have a little problem right there because Pantheon requires early sort of domination. Pantheon requires early kills, assists, etc. And there is no killing power in the top lane. Like, how are you going to kill a NAR with that? Yeah. You simply can't. 
And that's what we've seen, really. There was, in fact, not really much attention paid to uh, that top lane at all. It was all about the mid lane in these early stages, which, granted, Fizz actually started off well, you know. Yeah, two, he played zero, really, really one. good, i got to say. Didn't work out for them after that one, and now they find themselves 11,000 gold pretty much behind in this one. And we can see you were talking earlier on about Corky's magic damage, Oscar. Oh, yeah. It's and there's ridiculous. the haunting guys <laughs> and sorcerer shoes. Of course. Me. Honestly, I, it, it may look trolly, but I guarantee you this is not trolly. Like, that bit is actually legit, especially when you have double 80 like this. Um, we, we used to play that in, in G2 with uh, Yuki. Yuki was actually a really good Corky, and he's a really good Corky. So we used we used him with blue buff and everything, you know, just like an AP poker. Mm. And the damage is insane, man. Like, I think people underestimate a little bit the poke he can do, especially because just think about about, about the opponent's um, uh, builds. They're gonna just go for armor like crazy. Yeah. N not a lot of magic uh, resist right here. So that's like free poke for Corky. Oh. oh. You can see Casa jumping in there. Does manage to actually Whoa. land the route, followed by the dart Look binding, followed by the yeah, rockets, do anything. and then just implode him. Tower goes down as well in the mid lane. And now it is just four members of Bangkok Titans hoping that your flash walls don't choose to follow through. That's a big blast again there onto Lloyd. You can see <laughs> losing that, about man. a third of his HP. Pantheon also taking a big hit. Meanwhile, Zed's poking over on the other side, and they're not really able to hold on to the turret at this point. And this could very well with one fight just be the end of the game here. It looks like they are now going to finally push on to that inhib turret and they're not even fighting for this one. Not coming yeah. anywhere near it. Yeah. They're going to have to let them have it. Yeah, they couldn't go near Stakes Meganar. He would have just slammed them away. That's going to be the first inhibitor of the game going down 14-7 still. Fury Flash Wolves with a Big lead in this one. That's what they had to be careful of. They're going to try and go in for it. Fizz is going to dive oh, on. Do Don't think it's going to happen. Got exhausted. Zonia's hourglass. He's going to get picked off as soon as he comes back out of there. He will drop. And now it's surely just about the OE Flash Walls finishing the game. Yeah, I think Fizz just trying to make something out of nothing there. Ends up actually going down himself, which means a four versus five at this point. Although, you look at the Flash Walls, they've got three, four men that are actually quite low here. So they've decided to actually back away and that gives a bit of a window for the Bangkok Titans to try something where they are <laughs> that's, that's the OE flash How walls cute. you can see stakes uh, afro on the end yeah. there oh yeah that's why we showed that just to uh, in, just to prove just that we weren't lying about his incredible hair you know as a fist player uh, you know there's two kinds of, of, of fist games you know there's the fist games where you're 8-0 and the fist games where you're 0-8 <laughs> and in, in any I mean any of both are just unfair you used to play more of the zero eight ones, all right? Oh wow! Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, man, that, that's just mean, man. What is Carmack, it? Carmack we're, we're supposed to be colleagues, man. Yeah, Carmack said that I'm allowed. Yeah, to I, give I know you what Carmack has, has said. I mean, I, I actually can't imagine, you know. <laughs> Troll you as much as possible, of oh, course, yeah, as yes. always. This is going to be the fourth I, I don't know dragon. Why, but I like that guy. I don't know why. I really don't know why. And I can't understand myself for that. <laughs> but I like that guy. Yeah. He's, uh, rumor is he's got a great video of you. Oh, uh, <laughs> anyway, back to the game. You can see fourth dragon of the game picked up. Then Tika, speaking of, is going 0 8. He's 2 7 3 right now. He's heading for that 8. It feels so uh, bad to have a game like this yeah. with Fizz because you're supposed to be an assassin and you just assassin yourself every time you go in, you know? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help when you've got no vision and you just accidentally walk into three of them, uh, which is pretty much what's been happening here. We see it, Corky actually adding a last whisper into his build now. And, well, they're just going to push all three lanes out. The mid lane going to be pushed by Zed. Nart is still in the top side of the map as well. So they're going to be knocking on both of these side lanes anytime soon. And to be honest, five versus four fight is probably something they'll go for. The teleport's up for stake on Nar if he needs to actually join the rest of his team. And he's got to that stage where you just feel it's a, a matter of time before they actually close this game out. Yeah, NL feeling very confident there. The Bloodthirster shield didn't even get breached by the uh, laser. Tower coming out there, and they have got them completely split. You can see top one's been left alone. Maple's just going to carve to great big Whoa. chunks into that one. And that's going to be another inhibitor going down. Bangkok Titans are effectively helpless. They're going to go for it. The Silver Ultimates pop. They're going to dive everything onto Maple, but they're leaving the bottom tower completely exposed. Maple's just going to keep them busy here. We'll almost, we'll almost get a kill. That's going to be another inhibitor down. Mega now almost triggered. There's the bottom one going down, and that's all they needed to do. Just completely distract them. And now the rest of the team, they're going to rotate. Super Minions pushing in that mid lane. And Stake's just left alone to take the inhib. Yeah, I mean, he can he can probably kill 007 there. That's all three inhibitors going down. 
If Bangkok Titans come back from this one, well, it'd be a bit of a miracle, I think, to uh, say the least. We can see they're backing away. Direction barren, just because, you know, they have that, that extra little bit of power, something that they feel that they need to finish off a base. We are going to be seeing uh, a possible pushback. If you look at Pantheon, he's got his ultimate available, so could try to come in and steal this one. Well, that would be well, the ultimate steal, wouldn't then. it? Here comes the man drop. Lands in there. Can he get the smite steal? Nars going to pin him on against the wall. He's trying to do everything, trying to yeah, crawl that, towards. That was well played by Not going to happen that yet. Well played. Just destroyed him. Stopped attacking the Baron. That's going to get picked up by the OE Flash Wolves. And now they have just a couple of minutes left of this match to close things out. It is a best of three, remember. So this is not all over for the Bangkok really Titans. Good. But the OE Flash Wolves, they are in full control right now. You, you, you can see that. I mean, you can see that. They're in yeah. Full uh, I mean, if you've got time, 34 minutes into a game to, you know, just scratch your eyebrow a few times, mess around with your headphones, <laughs> you know that you're probably when, in a when you're eight, of yokes. When you're 8 one, five, and zero, one, eleven, like that bottom lane is, they're quite happily uh, doing whatever they want. Bangkok Titans, though, they they already is probably starting talking about the next game. I mean, when you're in this stage, you, you're just like, yeah, this game's over. Uh, what are we going to do? How are we going to counter it? What are the picks we're going to change? And uh, at this point, uh, you, you try to keep the things as or... Yeah, this is probably going to be a bit of a whitewash fight. We're going to see Fizz going down first of all. Just Look damage at from the Corky. damage from oh, Corky Jesus there Christ. at the back. These turrets are going to fall. Malphite has to use Unstoppable Force to get behind the Nexus there, but it's not going to make any difference here. It's going to be the Yoey Flash Wolves that pick up game number one. There's the glorious hair on your screen, Stake <laughs> on not. Did a fantastic job. It is it is a, a sight to behold, honestly. That afro is just, you know, the, the, the Plantronics headset just can't hold it back. <laughs> it just like, surrounds it. Big crowd, actually, in the uh, Taipei Arena, obviously, watching this matchup. And, of course, don't forget, Yoey Flash Wolves do play in the league that is played in Taipei. So, home favorites in that uh, matchup. And Bangkok Titans, they're going to have to do something, something special to turn that around because they were outmatched in every lane there. Yeah, it kind of started right at the very beginning, right? I mean, we you, you it mentioned starts, it yourself usually. that you picked two... <laughs> that's generally where things start, yeah, the start. Um, they, they picked two losing lanes. Fizz had that opportunity, got a couple of kills, but in your opinion, he, built wrong? He, he, he was ahead. Uh, although it's hard to say, you know, he has, it's hard to judge from my perspective because mm. there's always a reason a pro player builds uh, for, you know. But uh, in this situation, I think it would have been better if he was for the Seeker's Hangar. You know, I think that what uh, changed the game, the course of the game, was that when Fizz was 201 and he was like all, almost same farm as said, there was a gank in the mid lane with a corner gank from uh, Pantheon. Mm. But uh, I think uh, Yo executed much better. And and they got they got the the kill on Fizz and right there apart, apart from there it was just really really hard for Fizz because he was one level and a half behind I think and that's quite a lot against Ser. Ser is just a, gonna be a hero that if you're even with him like for example if you're Orianna against Ser or Fizz against Ser then you can actually trade you can actually win the game by that by being even with him but if you're not even with him and he's like one level ahead half a level ahead uh, some farm ahead it's gonna be really hard not to get snowballed really. Yeah, and one of course when they had that big dragon fight, ended up what four oh, yeah. four one in favor of the mm. Yoey Flash Wolves. That was bad. It was kind of like that's when you start having those sort of fights. You you kind of but already. I think there was a point where uh, Bangkok uh, Titans could have been uh, way more aggressive. You know, when uh, Malphite was in the top lane with TP, he was mm. putting the tower, and they could have tried to to get the smite. I know they didn't know Rengar was around, uh, but I mean they couldn't see him, so at least worth a try, you know. If they get the dragon and they pushed up without uh, Nar with uh, TP, I think they could have very well be the, the game. And I think there's this couple of situations um, that Bangkok could have uh, maybe done slightly better and that would have impacted the game much more, you know. So if we talk about the next game, you know, we can uh, kind of touch on that before we go into break and into uh, game number two. From picks and bans, is there anything that, that needs to change in terms of bans or uh, or different picks for these teams? Well, I think Wolves uh, picked right, but I think is 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 way too optimistic to think they're gonna win early game, the second game, just like they did in the first game. They had a setup that, of course, could work late game because of the Corky's AP damage, but it's a double-edged sword because if they don't start winning, if for some reason Malphite gets ahead with a TP or Fizz gets ahead and doesn't lose the... Uh, th then they're going to be lost because um, uh, Bangkok had a really good setup against against them after mid-game, if they're even, of course. Mm. So um, everything can run out of, out of control when you have a NAR and a Z, but I wouldn't bet um, everything on that, you know? It's way too much physical damage and normally you would you would do well early, but you never know. And if you don't, then you're lost. If you're slightly behind with that, 
yeah. you you have a problem. Well, it was a dominant victory for Definitely. the Yoey Flash Wolves in game number one. We'll see how game two goes in just.